Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there. After a little bit of a YouTube break, I'm back making videos, of course. And uh, today I wanna to take a look at a Docker container that will help you hopefully manage your servers a little bit better and possibly even free up some space on your Docker server. So today what I wanna look at is a service called Dupe Guru. So the idea behind Dupe Guru is that it will help you locate uh, and, and deal with duplicate files on your server. Uh, you know, sometimes you, you'll download things and, and you'll end up with duplicates of, of different movies or TV shows or pictures or whatever. And you can actually have Dupe Guru go through uh, and find different things on your server that are duplicates, that may be duplicates, that aren't duplicates, so that you can compare them, see what you wanna do with them and kind of go from there. But let's jump over to my desktop so I can actually show you uh, how to use and set up Dupe Guru. So here we are on my desktop and here we can see up here in the top left, it says Dupe Guru. We've got the, the connected uh, icon right up there. Of course, we're not encrypted. I don't feel like we need to be for what we're doing right now. You, you may uh, disagree with that and want to encrypt your data and that is perfectly fine. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna keep it simple. Uh, so here we are uh, on the, the homepage of Dupe Guru. And basically the first thing we wanna do uh, is actually jump over here uh, to this plus sign there we go. And we've got a couple of options on where we can look, uh, whether it's just on our computer, uh, that would be kind of the root, or uh, over here in storage. And this is where uh, I have set up a volume uh, for uh, Dupe Guru to have, uh, to have access to. So uh, in this storage uh, map, uh, you can see that we've got some stuff in here. <clears throat> and basically if we wanted to, we could go into e any of these uh, subfolders like into Moodle or whatever, and then we could say choose. So here we've got um, our, our slash storage uh, volume ma or mapped volume here uh, that will go through and look through all of these uh, different folders to see if it can find any duplicate uh, files or whatever. And up here you can say application mode. Uh, do we wanna look for just anything that looks like a duplicate? Do we wanna look up uh, for music? Do we wanna look at pictures? Uh, the scan type uh, is basically file name, but it can also look at the contents of those files and folders, or files or folders rather, uh, to look for things that might uh, trigger a duplicate that way as well. So uh, you can go in and kind of configure this uh, to whatever your uh, duplicate needs are as far as what you're looking for there. And then once you've got that set up, you just go down here to the bottom and click scan. So uh, first thing it's gotta do is actually kind of go over everything, collect all of the data that it needs in order to, uh, to scan the files. And then once it's done that, then it'll start going through and actually analyzing the files. And once that's done, then it will actually generate a list of files that it may think are things that you may wanna take a look at. So that was actually pretty quick. There's not a lot on this server. And um, basically that, that slash storage that I had there uh, was actually just the config folders uh, for the different applications I've got on this server for the sake of this demonstration. So here you can see all of the different files and folders uh, that, uh, or all the different files that it found. Like there's a lot of these uh, dot ex or external.php for Moodle. And there's, so you might want to, in that case, go look through those files and see, uh, are these duplicates or, in the case of an application, it's probably not, but, but that kind of gives you an idea. Uh, you can just click on dupes only, and there it will uh, just kind of clean up that list a little bit. Uh, you can look for delta values and just see, uh, you can actually match it by file size uh, and how much of a match it is, kind of gives you this over here, uh, just so you can kind of quickly glance and see how different or how similar files are uh, just for a quick analysis. So <clears throat> let's say, uh, I wanted to, oops, there we go. Let's just say I didn't want uh, either of those for whatever reason. Uh, then you could come up here to actions and you could uh, rename or or remove uh, marked or whatever, <clears throat> send marked to the recycle bin. You can then manage multiple files simultaneously uh, through this uh, little action items uh, option here. <clears throat> So that's how it works in general. That's a very high level overview, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how Dupe Guru works in just a, a, generic, uh, a generic instance here. So that's how Dupe Guru works. Now let's take a look at how to get Dupe Guru set up. In the past, we have uh, actually taken a look at uh, Jay Lesage or J Jay Lesage, I'm not sure. I think it's Lesage, but I could be wrong. Um, anyway, they've got a Docker, uh, hub.docker.com account over here for Dupe Guru. And uh, right there, they've got uh, a, a command line that you can run. Uh, of course, we don't like to necessarily do things in command line if we don't have to. So I made a, a stack or a Docker Compose, however you wanna do that, uh, based on uh, this CLI right here. Uh, below that, there's some more information, not much, um, but here it just says once it's loaded, then you can go to your host IP, 
port 5800, which you can see uh, right here. Now for more information, uh, right here, their full documentation is over here available on uh, GitHub and there's, there's some great information in here. I encourage you to go in here and look uh, because if you scroll down, uh, you can, again, you can see that quick start. Uh, and if we scroll a little bit further down, there are environmental variables that you can use to uh, customize your configuration uh, for the sake of your setup and what you need to do there. So lots of different stuff in here that you can take a look at. There are three paths. There's one for uh, con or for your config. There's one for storage. Of course, we looked at both of those uh, right over here. Oops, let's uh, just close that and let's remove this just for the sake of uh, taking another look. So when I click on this plus, oops, add a folder, here we go. So that's the storage uh, folder right there uh, that we can see here. Uh, the config is what we actually put in uh, where we tell it to store all of its configuration stuff. And then trash, uh, this is where duplicate, duplicated files will go when they're sent to the trash. Pretty straightforward stuff. <clears throat> so below that we've got uh, 5800 and 5900. Uh, 5900 is optional. If you needed to, if you've already got something on port 5800, you can change that sort of. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, and oh, so here is, uh, here's their version three stack. Uh, I mine it's very similar to that, but not quite. Um, <clears throat> so just some more information. Here's how to do it on Synology if you need to do that. Lots of really good information here on their GitHub page. Of course, I'll have all of this linked in the description down below. Uh, so we keep scrolling down much more or lots more information here, but let's take a look at my stack. Uh, here you can see mine's version two versus version three. Uh, again, it's Jay Lesage's uh, Dupe Guru, port 5800. I've got time zone, PYD, PGID, and three volumes, again, for uh, config, storage, and trash, like they showed in their volumes uh, options for, uh, for additional configurations on that GitHub page. So uh, all you need to do, again, this will be linked in the description, uh, just click raw, uh, and then you can just highlight, copy that, whether it's on your keyboard or via your mouse, whatever. Jump over to Portainer, and then you can come over here to stacks, uh, click on dupe guru, or <laughs> so click on stacks. I uh, hear I've already got dupe guru here, uh, but then you would just click on add a stack. Uh, and then of course you just paste that in there. Oops, give it a name like so, and then scroll down and click on deploy. Very straightforward, very easy to do. But of course you will want to change uh, your PUID and PGID to reflect your user account, whatever your admin account for your system is. Uh, like this uh, 10, uh, 26 and 100 is for my Synology setup. Uh, right now I'm not on Synology, so I've actually changed this uh, for my setup to be 998 and 100. Uh, so I'm using Open Media Vault for this. So if you're not sure how to get your PUID and PGID uh, for Open Media Vault, very straightforward stuff. Here's Putty. Yep, gonna use that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in Mighty Mouse, like so, and then drag this up like that, and I'll log in as root. <clears throat> so uh, you might think you would want to use root because that's what I just logged in as, but uh, what I the way I've always done this and the way it's been encouraged to me to do this is use the, uh, the admin account for your Open Media Vault uh, system. And that's what I'm using here. If you're on, on Synology, you would use uh, whatever your, your user account is to log into Synology. So uh, for the sake of what I'm doing here on Open Media Vault, I would just type in ID admin and hit enter. And right there, UID is 998, GID is 100. Uh, again, like for, for my Synology, oops, there we go. I would type in ID, uh, DB Tech. Uh, this is gonna throw an error, but I use DB Tech to log into my Synology uh, device. And that's what I would use to do that. Of course, there's no user here for that, but that's how you would do that to get your PUID and PGID uh, that you would put right up here. Of course, you change your time zone to wherever you are and map your volumes according to your Docker setup, wherever you've got uh, your, wherever you want to store your configs, uh, whatever folders you want to investigate and wherever you want to uh, map your trash folder to be. So once you've got all of that, you just scroll down and click on deploy the stack. And then it's going to take a few minutes to do its thing. And I, I, I want to show you that, but I've already got it deployed. So we're not going to do this, but you'll just click on deploy the stack uh, right there. So what I'm going to do is actually go back to stacks. I'm going to open up dupe guru. Uh, I'm just going to edit this. Um, and oh, just for the sake of it, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to change, I'm going to change something here. Tell you what, for the sake of it, I'll just change this to three. It won't make any difference, but that's what I'm going to do. Uh, just so you can kind of see what this will look like. I'll click on update. Oops. Oh, right, because I'm on business edition. Tell you what, we'll change that to 2.1. That should work. There we go. 
So then it's done this and we'll click on logs. Actually, we're not gonna click on logs. What we're gonna do is click on stats and then we're gonna change this to one second. And then we're just gonna hang out and watch. And what you're gonna notice here uh, is that it's using uh, more memory kind of up and down, but you'll notice the CPU uh, core that it's got, it's pegged at 100%. And it's going to stay pegged at 100% until the application has deployed, until that container is up and ready to go. And so we'll just let this sit for a bit. And then once it kind of, uh, once it calms down, I'll kind of show you what's, or what's going on. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> now we can see that it spiked and then it dropped off and then it spiked and then it dropped off. And now it's 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 not hardly using anything right here. And that's how we can tell that it's ready to go. Uh, if you wanted to, in fact, you can see over here, memory and cache uh, spiked up about the same time. Uh, not much as far as network usage is concerned either way. Uh, it looks like it hit about five kilobytes and was done. Um, but once, once you see uh, the memory go up like it did and the CPU go down like it did, you're pretty much safe to, to, to assume that this is ready to go. We can come over to here. Uh, this all looks fine. Uh, so what you can do is then click over here and it'll take you right to the screen we started on. Uh, if for whatever reason you don't have the ability, if you click this and, and instead of taking you here, it takes you to 0.0.0.0 port 5800. There's a way you can fix that. All you got to do is come over here to uh, your settings, go to endpoints, click on local and change this public IP. Uh, it'll be blank by default. Uh, you can put in your public or not your public IP, put in your server's local IP address or, or however you access your server locally. I use mightymouse.local, uh, click update endpoint. And then at that point, when you come back over here, then you can click on this and you can see it'll take you to mightymouse.local. Local, so that's how you can handle uh, your endpoints there. If it takes you to 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0, .0 port 5800 or whatever. So guys, there you go. There is how to install and set up and use Dupe Guru, a very cool little program to help you eliminate duplicate files on your server. Again, I wouldn't use this for uh, applications like I showed here, but uh, you might map, map that to your media folders or, or whatever the case is in order to look for duplicate uh, videos, pictures, things like that, uh, based on not only file name, but file size, uh, context of the pictures, things like that. Uh, it does a really good job as far as figuring out differences and whether or not they really are duplicates or not. So I hope you found this video helpful. I, I really do. I, I, again, thank you for sticking with me while I was gone for a week. Just had some stuff I had to deal with, but I'm back, gonna keep making videos and I hope you'll come along with me. Of course, if you're interested in this kind of content, you can always get subscribed uh, using the, the, the subscribe button down below. I've noticed that only only really about a third of you guys are subscribed. So if you're interested in this kind of content, click that button. Uh, also, uh, like I mentioned before, all of this will be available in the description down below where you can check that out. Uh, if you wanna, uh, uh, while you're down there, if you wanna help support the channel, there are a couple of ways you can do that by becoming either a channel member or a patron. Uh, either of those will be available down there. There's also coffee. If you don't wanna go through the hassle of memberships and things like that, you just wanna contribute a couple of bucks to the channel. Coffee is a great way to do that. And it happens instantly versus Patreon or uh, YouTube taking their cuts. Of course, you don't have to do any of that. Content's always free, but if you wanna help, that's a great way to do it. Uh, I do wanna give a big shout out to my patrons, to my channel members. Thank you guys so much for your constant support. Really do appreciate you guys. Uh, but I think with all of that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.